This is the secret piece of equipment that helps get fuel into all your vehicles worldwide. And no, it's not a boat, a pipeline, or something in a factory. Rather, they are known in the industry as semi-submersible crane vessels, or SSCVs. These floating behemoths are what enable oil and natural gas companies to assemble their offshore oil platforms. In addition to this, these monster cranes help build offshore wind farms, lay underwater pipes, and so much more. One of the largest cranes in the world still in service today is the Saipam 7000. Construction began in 1985 by Italian firm Fincantieri Cantieri at their Monfalcone yard in Trieste, and the massive vessel was the first of its kind in Europe. Due to its ginormous size, the vessel had to be made in the largest dry dock in the country, normally reserved for warships for the Italian Navy. After two years of work, the ship launched in 1987 for the first time, and it was massive. Weighing in at 117,812 tons, the Saipem 7000 is the third largest by weight. For its dimensions, it is 594 feet long, 261 feet wide, and its upper platform is 525 feet high. The normal draft, or how low the vessel sits in the water when transiting, is 10.5 meters. However, this draft increases to 27.5 meters when the Saipem 7000 ballasts down. When any vessel ballasts down, the crew intentionally floods what are called ballast tanks with seawater. Ships can do this for a variety of reasons, but in the case of SSCVs, the crane ships do this to stabilize the unit when conducting heavy lift or deep sea operations, and anchoring the vessel to the seafloor is not possible. As for the Saipem 7000, the crane ship has a grand total of 40 ballast tanks with 81,000 cubic meters of water capacity. 14 of these ballast tanks are rapid ballast tanks with a capacity of 26,000 cubic meters. Why one would need to use the rapid versus the normal ballast tanks is a matter of convenience since if the lift is not as heavy, there's no need to fill all the ballast tanks, which could take hours depending on the pump rate. Powering the massive crane are 12 diesel generators capable of an output of 70,000 kilowatts of energy. These generators provide power to 12 AZI thruster engines. On the Saipem 7000, there are four thrusters on the bow, four on the stern, and one each on every port and starboard quarter of the crane. When cruising from one destination to another, the Saipem 7000 can reach max speeds of 9.5 knots. However, only the aft daisy thrusters are needed when transiting. But why? Because maintaining station during deep sea lift operations is paramount for the safety of the crew and equipment. SSCBs and other deep sea vessels are equipped with technology called dynamic positioning. Dynamic positioning has been around for decades, but its modern version is a far cry from what first came out in the 1960s. Today, DP technology, as it is known, uses a variety of sensors and equipment, such as laser ring gyros and sensors that measure wind and current speed. Computer algorithms then take this data and use it to give commands to the AZ thrusters to help maintain the station during deep sea operations. But getting back to the Saipem 7000, the proverbial star of the show is its lift capacity. The two primary cranes are port and starboard bow-mounted M-hoist heavy lift cranes. Each crane has a capacity of 7,000 tons, with a combined lift capacity of 14,000 tons for the vessel. These cranes can extend a maximum of 45 meters from the vessel and maintain a 6,000-ton load each while doing so. They can also lower up to 450 meters below the waterline to retrieve or place objects. In addition to these primary cranes, the Saipem 7000 has two auxiliary cranes, the larger auxiliary crane is rated for 2,500 tons and another for 900 tons. These smaller cranes are used for lighter lifts where it's not necessary to ballast or operate the larger Amhoist cranes. But while this crane might seem large, there is another one that takes some of these impressive stats and blows them out of the water. The SSCB Thialf is the second largest SSCB by weight in the world. 
completed in 1985 by the Japanese firm Mitsu Engineering and Shipbuilding for McDermott International, it was bought by Dutch shipping company Harima Marine Contractors in 1997 as its flagship underwater crane vessel, and it truly earned that spot. Coming in at 136,709 tons, the Theauf is about 25,000 tons heavier than the Saipem. As far as dimensions, it's about 606 feet long, 264 feet wide, and 312 feet high. The transit draft is 11.9 meters, and the vessel can ballast down to a lift draft of 31.6 meters. Twelve diesel engines with a similar AZ thruster are powering this monster set up similar as the Saipem 7000. However, unlike the Saipem, the Theauf can only travel a max speed of 7 knots while transiting, which could indicate that the power output or thrusters of the Saipem are more powerful. However, the lift capacity on the Theauf is better. The primary cranes on the SSC Theauf are two port and starboard bow cranes, each with a lift capacity of 7,100 tons. While the Theauf has a combined total of 200 more tons of lift than the Saipem 7000, its primary cranes can only safely extend to 31.2 meters, about 14 meters less than the Saipem. However, it can extend its cranes much deeper. The Theauf's auxiliary cranes have a maximum depth of 850 meters at 900 tons of lift capacity. In addition to this crane, Theauf has another auxiliary crane with a lift capacity of just 200 tons but can extend up to 433 feet from the vessel. But cranes are not the only things Theauf has on board. Besides housing 736 workers, the Theauf is also equipped with a fully stocked helicopter pad and saturation diving chamber. Because extensive underwater work is required, this chamber is crucial to ensuring the safety of divers who might spend weeks at a time under the sea. As far as some noteworthy projects are concerned, the SSCV has held two previous world records. One of these was for an 11,883-ton lift for Shell's Shearwater platforms, which was the heaviest lift on record for a time. In addition, the Theolf also set a world record for the heaviest lift in the Gulf of Mexico when it installed a 7,810-ton spar for a new BP oil rig in 2004. However, since those lifts, Saipem 7000 beat those records in the coming years with lifts that were several thousand tons heavier, including the Sabratha deck lift at 12,150 tons. Because of this, though the Theof might be slightly larger, it was later beaten out by the Saipem 7000 for some of its records. But this neck-and-neck -neck competition would all change with the creation of the world's largest SSCV. Named after Odin's eight-legged horse, the SSCV Sleipnir is the world's largest SSCV by a long shot. Completed in 2019 by Singapore-based marine builder Semcorp Marine, the massive vessel was so large that it had to first be assembled in China with each piece brought on a Roro cargo ship meant for carrying cars and assembled in Singapore. When the ship was finally delivered to Harima Marine, it was and remains today an engineering marvel. Weighing in at 273,700 tons, it is over double the weight of the SSCV Theauf. The SSCV Sleipnir is 660 feet long, 306 feet wide, and 720 feet tall. With a transit draft of 12 meters, the Sleipnir can ballast down to 39 meters when working. Powering this massive beast requires a lot of power, and its 12 generators can produce almost 100,000 megawatts of power. These generators help power the eight AZ thrusters on the bow and stern, propelling this beast 10 knots from point to point. As an interesting aside, because of Harima's dedication to being a carbon-neutral company, the Sleipnir can be powered by fuel, liquefied natural gas, or LNG. However, LNG as a power source is certainly unique, and the Sleipnir can store so much of it that the crane can operate for a month, 24 hours a day, without needing a refuel. But what about its lift capacity? 
The prime movers of the Sleipnir are its two cranes, each having a lift capacity of 10,000 tons. Unlike the previous two cranes, the Sleipnir can maintain this weight up to 48 meters out from the vessel. Beyond 48 meters, the crane can maintain a 7,000-ton lift capacity on each crane up to a 62-meter radius and a 4,000-ton capacity at 82 meters from the craft. All told, the Sleipnir can extend its primary cranes up to 129 meters from the vessel. In addition to its primary lift capacity swinging outward, the deep-sea lift of the two previous cranes cannot even compare. With a lift capacity of 1,000 tons at 1,000 meters below sea level, 76 tons at 1,500 meters, and an astounding 240 tons at 3,000 meters below the surface of the water, the Sleipnir can reach places no other crane has done before. And the hardware used to accomplish these feats are massive. 1,100 ultra-large bolts, weighing 88 pounds each, hold these huge cranes in place. The crane's 30-meter-wide bearings, the largest such components in the world, help them rotate. In addition to these huge cranes, the SSCB Sleipnir comes standard with a helipad, living accommodations for 400 workers, and a revolutionary dynamic positioning system that can keep the crane within one square meter of its intended position. With all this amazing capability, the SSCB Sleipnir has been busy at work since its launch in 2019 and has already set a world record. In 2019, within the first six months of launch, the Sleipnir was helping Israel develop its Leviathan natural gas field in the eastern Mediterranean. On that balmy September evening, the Sleipnir made history when it lifted the 15,200-ton platform deck onto the spar of the Leviathan oil platform. Since then, the Sleipnir and the other two cranes, for that matter, have been busy working in the North Sea helping countries like Germany, the UK, and Denmark maintain oil and natural gas platforms, install wind farms, and complete many other projects. What the future holds for the Sleipnir and its sister cranes is virtually limitless thanks to their amazing lift capacity, which helps keep the world's energy market moving. Bye for now.